This video is sponsored by Surfshark. This Galaxy watch has essentially been on my wrist every single day since it launched back in 2018. So you know I love it. When it comes to smartwatches, I've only ever known Galaxy watches. I've decided to expand my smartwatch horizons, starting with what many would consider the best one out, the Apple Watch. After picking up the 40 millimeter series five, my SIM immediately went into the 11 Pro because of course, the Apple Watch will only pair with an iPhone and nothing else. No iPhone? Sorry, no Apple Watch for you. Having no previous experience, learning how to navigate around did take some time. In general, I still prefer Samsung's physical rotating bezel, but the digital crown is great in its own unique ways. The super realistic haptic feedback you get when scrolling is so good. I almost can't believe it's not the actual crown physically clicking. I've also started using the side of my thumb and palm to scroll, kind of like this. You know what's really impressive? How consistently smooth and responsive everything is. Absolutely no stutters. On my Galaxy Watch, there's always this slight delay when I click on handwriting input before I can start scribbling. But on the Apple Watch, it's pretty much instant. Is that extra second that big of a deal? For me, not really. But for some, it might be. The big new feature on the Series 5 was the addition of an always-on display. Having always used one on my Galaxy watches, I can't even imagine not having a watch display that isn't always on. Being able to discreetly check the weather, date, and time while working on a computer, driving, or when my hands are preoccupied is so helpful. If I went with a Series 4, which doesn't have an always-on display, this would have been a serious complaint for me. Let me just say, I'm a sucker for info-rich watch faces that give me the most information at a glance. The Apple Watch makes up for its lack of third-party watch faces with highly customizable ones. I absolutely love the massive number of complications. Thanks to the square design of the display, these complications can be tucked into the extra space in the corners. When I discovered that you can quickly swipe through the different watch faces, I found myself setting them up for different situations. It all feels very fluid and functional. Responding to text messages and taking calls without reaching for my phone is a convenience I don't think I could give up these days. The Apple Watch handles both really well, so no complaints from me. To my surprise, Siri actually does a really solid job dictating my speech when responding to messages too. I found it strange that you cannot play media on the watch's speaker. You need a pair of set of Bluetooth earbuds to listen to anything. I assume this is to conserve battery. The speakers on the watch are basically used for only voice calls and notification sounds. I'm a big fan of tech that makes my life easier. Well, a device that's been reported to actually save lives? That's a game changer. From a health perspective, the Apple Watch is impressive. The fact that I can easily take an ECG anywhere at any time is honestly amazing. That combined with fall detection definitely needs to be made mainstream on high-end smartwatches. In terms of activity tracking, the Apple Watch takes an interesting approach. It shows daily movement as three metrics, move, workout, and stand. Burn a certain amount of calories, exercise for a certain number of minutes, and stand up each hour a certain number of times. These goals are visualized into three activity rings, and your mission each day is to close those rings. The concept is so simple, yet it works and quickly becomes addictive. Oh, and the awards are also a nice playful touch to keep you motivated. When it came time to work out, I simply selected the workout type and let the watch do its thing. Once done, it gives you a nice breakdown of your workout stats. It can also nudge you to start tracking if it detects certain movements, but won't just automatically start a workout. All your health and activity data can be found on two separate phone apps, but I think most will be more than happy to just close out the rings daily and not worry about all the numbers. If it gets too complex or requires too much effort, most tend to get discouraged. So the concept of simply closing your rings daily works really well in that sense. Stats like steps and floor count take a backseat. 
Each and every night, I jotted down the battery percentage before putting it on the charger at 10 p.m. Most nights, it would be sitting between 20 to 30 percent. And yes, this is with the always on display on. Expect to charge this thing daily with a full charge taking around two and a half hours. The Series 5 has 32 gigabytes of built in storage. It's appreciated because I'm big on offline listening, especially for music at the gym or motivational stuff during my walks when I just don't want to bring my phone along. I'm a Spotify person, but only Apple Music allows you to sync music onto the watch. So I found myself signing up, using, and actually liking it. Although it was nice to see a Google Keep app plus a large variety of available fitness apps, I never felt like I needed anything outside of the already installed basics. Before I wrap up, huge shout out to the video sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark VPN encrypts the internet traffic sent to and from your device. So no one can see where you are and what you're doing online, especially relevant on unsecure public Wi-Fi. While in Japan, I fell in love with several Japanese shows on Netflix, but unfortunately, they weren't available when I got back home. With Surfshark, I've been able to bypass the geo restriction and continue to watch without actually being in Japan. Since there's no limit to the number of devices you can connect at a time, with one account, the entire family can stay secure too. Check out Surfshark by clicking the link below and using the promo code TAO. You'll get 83% off and one month completely free. As you can tell, my experience with the Apple Watch was overwhelmingly positive. I get why so many people have fallen in love with the Apple Watch experience. Is it enough to justify switching to an iPhone if you're not using one? I would suggest giving the Galaxy Watch Active 2 a shot, a very solid alternative on the Android side of things. It is frustrating that the ECG and fall detection features are still not here, despite being promised way back at launch. But the Active 2 actually does a few things the Apple Watch can't do like automatically detect and track workouts, offer full Spotify support, and not to mention, it's also easier on the wallet. Personally, I'm actually back on the original Galaxy Watch. I just really love the design and because my main device is a Pixel 4 XL. With that being said, if you're in the market for a smartwatch, own an iPhone and have the budget, the Apple Watch seems like a no brainer. Thank you so much for watching guys. Next up, I want to give Android Wear a shot, so drop some of your top recommendations in the comment section and I'll pick up the one that gets mentioned the most. Until the next one, I'm out of here.